Hello and welcome to this WPIAL Championship Edition of Game On, brought to you by Homer Nine and Sons, alongside Mike Byers. I'm Andrew Chiapese. We're on the last leg to the highway to Hines. We have two teams left playing Saturday in the Whitfield Finals, Alacuba versus South Fayette and Central Valley versus Thomas Jefferson. So we will chat with Alacuba's Jasir Jordan and shine the spotlight on Central Valley's Saad Jabber. All that and more is coming up next. It's Game On. Lights camera, and a whole lot of action. It's high school football, like you've never seen it before. Here we go, it's game on. Well, you'd have to go back about 20 years to 1995 for the last time that no teams from the Times coverage area were involved in the Whippeal Championship. So it's no surprise that we have two teams playing Saturday for Whippeal titles. Al Quippa against South Fayette and Thomas Jefferson will face Beaver County's own Central Valley. Mike, I guess it's no surprise that these are our two teams. And let's begin with Al Quippa, who will be going to their eighth straight Whippeal Championship game. They played the last three now against South Fayette. They are 0-2 so far. What has been the Quips kryptonite against the South Fayette Lions. What has been the problem for Al Equipa in the championship game the last few years? Well, first of all, AJ, uh, at that stage, at the championship game, you better be on your A game in all phases of the game. And the Quips have made some mistakes here and there. But most importantly, South Fayette, the last two years, has had Brett Brumbaugh, <laughs> the Whippeals' leading passer. Um, he threw for 300 yards in both of these games. Uh, last year, 352. That's the most passing yards ever by a Whippeal quarterback in a championship game played at either Three River Stadium or Heinz Field. No brown ball this year, <laughs> so the Quips got a chance. Yeah, if you're taking a look at this Alacrippa team and this matchup for Saturday, uh, is there an area of the game or something that with this Alacrippa team where you say, okay, the third time will be the charm? For me, I take a look at something that Mike Smianek says quite frequently, the fact that you can't compare teams from year to year because of personnel changes. And if you take a look at this Alacrippa team, they've been challenged this year. They've been in some tight moments a little bit. They've faced some very good teams, and they've come out the other side. They haven't always had that challenge, haven't always had to face that adversity in the last couple of years. It's your first of all, I'm not so sure the Quips have been that seriously tested this year. I know they had a couple close games. Well, Quaker Valley was close at halftime, but that was the game when Mike Zmianek was not coaching. Uh, he was suspended for a game because of a freak um, sideline penalty the previous week. Uh, but in the playoffs, uh, they've been crushing people left and right. Um, two things I think are favorite Quips this week. Uh, first of all, they have um, in running back, linebacker, uh, Kazon Pugh, Maybe the best player in the whip, you always would go to Pitt. He's a man among boys. And also, their defense has picked off 22 passes this year, including seven by safety, Sheldon Jeter, five by cornerback, Jasir Jordan. Um, I think if South Vietnam gets sloppy in this game here, the Quips can win pretty handily, I think. Well, joining us now to talk about Al Equipa's eight straight WPL Finals appearance and their game against South Fayette on Saturday is wide receiver defensive back Jasir Jordan. Jasir, welcome to the show. Thank you. Just here, uh, it's like a, a right of November for the Quips to be playing at Heinz Field. This is eight in a row. Uh, what's it like taking that trip every, you know, championship day, uh, the bus ride from here to up there and playing at Heinz Field, the home of the Steelers, you know? Um, it's fun. It's like you get used to it because, like, every year since we played here, since freshmen, like, the people that play when they are sophomores, we've been at Heinz every single year. So, like, once you're playing there, you're not nervous or anything. You're used to it. Yeah. It's like it's a home game. Yeah, for you veteran guys, for the guys that maybe haven't experienced or, or, or maybe went down there but haven't played in these games, will you talk to them at all this week? Will you go over things with them to just say this is what to expect? Yeah, we talked to them a lot. We told them, like, everybody had to go through it before. Just go out there and play football. Don't think about it too much as, like, the Whippy or championship. Just go out there and play football and then do what we do every game, try to get the win. Just sure, this is the 100th anniversary of the Whippy championships. And for the first time in 100 years, we have – Two teams playing in the final for the third straight year. South Fayette versus the Quips. Um, what do you make of, of the fact they're playing South Fayette again, and, and what's it like playing those guys for the third straight year? It's a good thing. It's a good thing. South Fayette, they're a good team, and then we meet up a lot, and then we just need to win in this game. We didn't beat them at Heinz Field yet. We beat them in the playoffs. It was back then, but to meet them, I wanted to play them again, honestly. So then we should get the revenge. 
Yeah, have you guys talked about that? Is that something you guys, you know, we make a big deal of the fact that it's the third straight game that you guys are playing them and, you know, that they've won the last two. Do you guys talk about that? Has it been a motivating factor for you guys? Yeah, it's, it's motivating because we really don't talk about it too much, but it's the fact that that's the team we lost to since we've been in high school. So you want to end that trend and then we really want to win this game. To see the quarterback he lost to the past two years was Brett Brumbaugh, the Whippeals' all-time leading passer. And in both games against you guys the last two years, he threw for over 300 yards, in fact, 352 last year. Uh, he's gone this year. Um, what's their new quarterback like? He's a sophomore, Drew Saxton. Uh, is their offense the same? And what's the new quarterback like? Um, we watched a lot of film. The quarterback, he's, he looks like a good quarterback. Um, you see, that's why he's starting. He's a good quarterback. I've seen he threw for like 1,000 yards tonight. We're watching a lot of film on everyone, though. We want to stop the run and the pass. So we're just looking at every individual and to see what they're doing. Just here, uh, thanks for your time today. Uh, congrats on a great season so far. Good luck Saturday against South Korea. Thank you for having me. Central Valley's Saad Jabber doesn't score touchdowns and he's not an explosive playmaker, but opposing offenses know him all too well thanks to his defensive play. Like many high school athletes, Saad Jabber grew up in an athletic family. And like many in Western Pennsylvania, he gravitated toward the football field. He loved the game, even though he often didn't have the size. I was a small kid, you know what I mean, growing up, and uh, I kind of hit a growth spurt probably 10th to 11th grade. That was my big year, you know what I mean, and I'm here now. Jabber waited his turn at Central Valley, playing on special teams until his senior year. But with so many players gone via graduation, Jabber became a starter this year at linebacker. His role expanded when fellow linebacker Nick Moad went out with an injury in week eight. Um, it was something crazy, you know what I mean, like a freak incident. We came into this game versus Hopewell, not even, even expecting anything close to that. And when we saw him go down over here on the hash, we knew it. Because, you know, I mean, we saw his leg twist, and he came up, and me and him had a deep conversation. We had to take over. This will be Jabber's third trip to Heinz Field, but this one will have more meaning. And he'll try to savor every last bit. All three years of my varsity career, I was lucky enough to go. But I think, like, this year it means something a little bit more special. We don't have any Division I athletes this year, you know what I mean? It's just a bunch of hard-nosed guys that work hard every day. It's going to be a great experience. We're working hard throughout the week and hopefully come out with the win. Well, after Aliquippa and South Fayette wrap up the Class AA final on Saturday, Central Valley will take the field for the third straight year, this time facing Thomas Jefferson. And Mike, these Central Valley Warriors have been a topic of discussion here on Game On quite a bit over the course of the season. And one of the topics that we've hit on with Central Valley has been the big three. Kurt Ryan Settler at receiver, Kyle Vereen at running back, and Chris Calligan at quarterback. I can't help but feel that if Central Valley is going to defend its title successfully on Saturday, those big three are going to play a huge factor in the game. What do you think? Especially the quarterback and the receiver. Because uh, last week when TJ uh, beat West Allegheny, uh, they pretty much shut down their running game, West A's great running game. So um, it would not surprise me at all if they shut down Calvarine. But I think the key in this game is going to be Chris Kelligan, the quarterback, current my setter at receiver, and maybe other, other receivers in that mix too. But, uh, you know, it should be a great football game. Uh, TJ is a great football program. You know, the Parkway has won the last six a team from the park was one of the last six Whippeal titles. Before that, TJ won three in a row. So it should be a very good football game. Yeah, and the real, really interesting thing about Thomas Jefferson has been their defense has steadily improved all the year. You mentioned that West Allegheny game. Um, their running game, though, too, for Thomas Jefferson has been exactly what we've come to expect from the Jaguars. Two backs have combined for over 2,000 rushing yards. And I know that Central Valley's defense has been progressing and has been great, but, man, that's a lot to ask out of your defense to slow down that physical of a, of a running game. And, AJ, remember that um, uh, we talked a lot about Central Valley losing their first game against Montour and racking off all these wins to get to the Heinz Field. TJ also lost its first two games mm -hmm. and have ripped off, you know, 10 straight wins since then. So, um, should, like I said before, it should be a great football game. Well, that does it for this edition of Game On. Be sure to check us out on Facebook for anything you might have missed throughout the week. And join us Saturday at timesonline.com slash game on for stories, stats, videos, photos, and more of both our local championship games. And, of course, you can always follow us on Twitter with the hashtag TimesFB for all the latest news and updates from those of us here at timesonline.com. For Mike Byers, I'm Andrew Chiapese. Goodbye from Aliquippa and Game On.